I've just discovered a lentil soup from Lebanon that is incredibly light and fresh tasting. It's filled with loads of vegetables and lots of lemon juice, which make it a much lighter lentil soup recipe than any other. And to top it off, it's also vegan. To start, let's prepare the ingredients and vegetables. First up is the lentils, and for this recipe you want to use green lentils. Unlike red lentils which melt into a mushy lentil paste, green lentils stay whole when they're cooked. Because of this, our soup maintains a light and thin texture, which makes it much lighter to eat than red lentil soup. Measure out 200 grams of green lentils and thoroughly wash them under the tap. I mostly do this to wash off the surface starch, but some people say that this helps to prevent gas. I'm not exactly convinced. After that, just drain off the water and set the lentils aside. For the vegetables, start with two medium onions, and you need to dice these to a medium small size. They should be small enough to disappear into the soup once cooked. After that, we have a carrot, which you want to peel and then slice into small pieces. I cut the thicker parts into quarters and the thinner parts into semicircles, so the chunks are about the same size. Next up is a single firm potato, and again, you want to peel this, then cut it into fries that are about one and a half centimeters wide. Next, take those fries and cut them into cubes, and you should be left with small pieces that are about this big. The last vegetable to prepare is the greens, and there's two real choices that you can make. This soup is mostly made with Swiss chard, which is a bitter tasting green leaf that's not too different from spinach. It takes some light work to prep and it's less widely available, so you often find spinach used instead of the Swiss chard. Feel free to go with either option. If you're using spinach, you'll need about 300 grams which you use whole, whereas the Swiss chard should be between 300 to 500 grams. If you are using Swiss chard, you'll notice that the leaves vary wildly in size. Here's some smaller ones from the supermarket and then some massive ones from an organic store. The organic ones have holes from what I can only assume are mutant caterpillars, and they also have thick stalks which need some special prep. First though, take your Swiss chard and give each leaf a good wash to get rid of any dirt. Now when you're cooking this, the leaves and stalks cook at different rates, so to prevent the leaves from going too bitter, we want to separate them from the stalks. To prep the smaller leaves, you just stack them on top of each other and then slice off the stalks at the bottom of the leaf. Don't throw these away as we'll use them, and you should do the same for all stalks that are about the thickness of a pencil until you have a pile of stalks that look kind of like rock candy. The rest of the leaves will still have some amount of stalk attached, but these are thin enough that they won't cause any issue when cooking. If however your chard is massive and has really thick stalks like these, use a knife to cut either side of the stalk and then separate it from the actual leaf. Because these stalks are so much thicker, they need to be cut differently than the thin ones, or they'll make the soup too chunky. Repeat this as necessary with your leaves, and then let's break down these stalks. The smaller ones just need to have their ends chopped off as there's sometimes a little soil on them. Then that stack of candy cane can be chopped into small 1-2cm to two segments. These small pieces might look sweet and delicious, but I'm pretty sure they'll be quite bad raw. For the larger stalks, you need to break these down to pencil sized sticks like the thinner ones, and then when you have a load of them, chop them up into small 1-2cm to two centimeter pieces like the others. At this point, you can start the soup, and we'll get back to the rest of the leaves while it's cooking. Place a deep pot on the stove over medium heat and pour in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. When that's heated, add in the diced onion and saute this in the oil for about 5-6 to six minutes. When the onions have softened a little and look like this, add in the diced potatoes. We'll fry them with the onions for a couple of minutes and I find that this short fry helps them retain their shape. Two minutes later, it's time to add in everything else. Start off with three cloves of garlic minced to a paste and stir that around for 20-30 to 30 seconds. Next up, add the sliced carrots and then only the stalks of the Swiss chard. Add in the washed lentils and then pour in 2 litres of liquid. In my case, I'm using a litre of chicken stock which I made from stock cubes. Obviously, this isn't vegan, but this can be replaced with whatever vegetarian or vegan stock cubes you like. I also added in a litre of water to bring the total amount to 2 litres. Then you just turn the heat up to high and bring the pot to a boil. By covering it with a tight fitting lid, you'll trap in the heat and it will boil much faster. Once it's boiling, use a spoon to skim off any scum from the surface of the soup and this will leave the soup tasting a bit cleaner. Once it's relatively clear, turn the heat down to low so that the pot is at a simmer and then cover it once more. This needs to cook now for about 30 minutes until the lentils are ready. In the meantime, we can finish off the actual green part of the leaves. We want these cut into small ribbons. First, cut each leaf into as many 3cm wide strips as you can and pile them on top of each other. Next, take the pile of ribbons and cut across it to cut those ribbons into smaller rectangles. Your end result should be something like this, small strips of Swiss chard leaves. One more thing you need is some lemon juice. You need about 80 to 100 milliliters of lemon juice, which works out to about two whole lemons. Once you've juiced those, just wait for your timer to go off. 30 minutes later, here's what the soup looks like. Everything is well cooked, and you can double check that by testing the potatoes and lentils for a cooked texture. Mine was fine, so it's time for the finishing touches. Add in two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of cumin, and half a teaspoon of black pepper. 
add in 80 milliliters of the lemon juice and keep the rest aside, then give the pot a good mix. Here's where you taste the soup and adjust it if necessary. I felt like it needed the additional 20 milliliters of lemon juice, so I added that in and it was just right. Once it's good, you can add in the leaf part of the Swiss chard, as we only want this to cook for about 1-2 to two minutes. The longer you cook this, the more bitter and darker it will go, so I'd recommend adding this right before you plan on serving. In my case, I split the soup in half and added half of the leaves, then I slowly mixed that together. Once the leaves have wilted, you should dish up and serve right away. Despite the simplicity of ingredients, this soup is seriously packed full of flavour, and I feel it leaves nothing to be desired. It's filling, great tasting and quite easy to make. Maybe you should try it and my red lentil soup and let me know which one you prefer.